The FH-77 is one of the best examples of the new generation Western 155mm towed artillery systems which was studied between the mid-1960s and introduced in the 1970s. Although many remember it with the infamous Bofors scandal in India, this howitzer is also the hero of the Kargil War. Today, we're investigating the FH-77, the fastest 155mm gunslinger. The FH-77 takes its name from the Swedish word Feldhabits, which means field howitzer, and the year that Sweden ordered it. It was the product of one of the new generation towed artillery development programs initiated in many western countries between the mid-1960s and early 1970s. Two main factors paved the way for the development of the FH-77. Sweden had acquired and produced the French Obusier de 155mm Model 50 under license in the early 1950s. But after a while, the carriage of this howitzer, whose Swedish designation was 15.5cm Hobbits F, began to experience cracks in the harsh conditions of Scandinavia. So, the Swedish army needed a new 155mm towed howitzer. In the same period, the Warsaw Pact armies had an overwhelming numerical superiority in the field of towed artillery. As if this wasn't enough, no Western artillery system could reach the range of the 130mm M46 field gun except the 175mm M107 SPG. Alongside the M46, the BM-21 Grad multiple launch rocket system, the Warsaw Pact armies had the advantage on the counter-battery missions. So, Many Western countries, including Sweden, began to work on an advanced new generation 155mm towed artillery. The new howitzers would have longer caliber barrels and be able to use new advanced artillery shells and propelling charges to increase the range. They would have an auxiliary power unit or shortly APU. This device would increase survivability against counter battery fire by giving them limited mobility and reducing the setup and redeployment times. The APU would also help increase the rate of fire, so a smaller number of howitzers could fire more rounds in a shorter time. You may ask why many Western countries did not think to replace their towed artillery with self-propelled ones. All military planners thought that the conventional battles of a possible Third World War would be similar to the previous ones. In the long run, numerical superiority would prevail over quality. So, Western armies needed towed artillery which was less complex and expensive than the self-propelled ones. For example, Sweden had already tested the M109 for its 15.5cm Hobbits F replacement program. The acquisition expenses of this self-propelled howitzer were low, but its life cycle costs were too high compared to the towed one. Sweden studied the requirements and features of the new towed artillery system between 1965 and 1968. The Swedish Defense Procurement Agency first wired its material yellwork awarded AB Bufosh a development contract in the late 1960s. The company completed the first prototype of the FH-77 in 1973 and began serial production in 1978. The Swedish army took the howitzer into service in the same year. The standard crew of the FH-77 is 10 to 14 person. But four people can take the gun into the firing position set up, feed and fire. The initial variant of the howitzer, the FH-77A, had the Volvo B20 engine mounted on the forward part of the carriage. The B version has the Mercedes-Benz OM616918 diesel engine. Thanks to the APU, the howitzer can travel at a speed of 7 km per hour in the self-propelled mode. The gun layer who also acts as a driver, is positioned on the left side of the carriage and uses levers to steer the FH-77. The large main wheels are used for both driving and steering. The hydraulically operated support wheels on trails assist in lumbering and unlumbering the howitzer. The standard towing vehicle of the FH-77 is the Saab Skonia Sped 111S 6x6 truck, whose Swedish army designation was TGB-40. It had a high up made crane for ammunition handling. The truck can tow the howitzer at a maximum road speed of 70 km per hour. When traveling on rough terrain, 
the APU and main wheels of the FH77A can be employed, which provides 8x8 drive capability. But due to limitations of the APU, the truck and the howitzer can go only at a speed of 8 km per hour in this configuration. Entering the firing position and setting up is performed with power provided via the APU. The gun layer hydraulically elevates and traverses the barrel. Although the barrel has limited traverse angles, the entire howitzer body can easily be turned toward the target thanks to the APU. The loading table is on the right on which the 155mm projectiles are placed via an ammunition crane. The ammunition handler screws the fuses into the 155mm projectile and places the cartridge case onto the loading table. Cartridge cases used in the FH-77A variant have been replaced with the back charges in the B version. The crane handler lifts three projectiles at a time onto the loading table. Thanks to this feature, the FH-77A could fire three rounds in six to eight seconds, which makes it the fastest 155mm towed howitzer. On the other hand, the rate of fire of the FH-77B in burst mode is three rounds per 12 seconds. The loader, who sits on the right, feeds the projectile from the loading table and operates the rammer. The semi-automatic breech mechanism of the FH-77A had a vertical sliding breech block open downwards. The B version has a breech screw mechanism. Although the standard side of the FH-77 is the BAAB RIA electronic side, the howitzer can be used with different ones. It also has a telescope sight which can magnify the target's view four times. The BAAB NK24 night sight fitted in front of the ordinary telescopic sight allows direct fire capability under night conditions. The howitzer is equipped with an electromechanical firing device. The FH-77 also has hand pumps, one for laying and ramming and one for the caster wheels. They can be used to obtain the pressure required in the hydraulic systems in case of an APU failure. Also, thanks to these hand pumps, the howitzer can be operated quietly, which offers a highly effective solution to hiding the firing position. The FH-77A had a 155mm 38 caliber barrel. The export variant of the howitzer, the FH-77B, is fitted with a 39 caliber one, which can fire NATO standard ammunition. Later, Sweden also updated its FH-77As to B standards. These howitzers had some other modifications to be operated at lower temperatures. The FH-77B has better general handling and cross-country mobility. Besides, it is fitted with a breech screw mechanism and a new hydraulic loading system. Initially, the B version had a parallel pepper pot muzzle brake similar to the A variant. However, following trials, the late production models of the FH-77B were fitted with a new and more efficient double baffle ones. The early production howitzers have also been refitted with this muzzle brake later. Thanks to these changes, the maximum range of the FH 77 has increased from 22,000 to 30,000 meters. It can also fire bonus, the artillery cluster munition designed for indirect fire top attack rolls against armored vehicles within a range of 35,000 meters. Currently, some Indian companies and research institutions are jointly working on 155mm shells using ramjet propulsion. So, the Indian FH-77s can send a precision-guided round to over 60,000 meters range when the project is concluded. In 1992, Sweden began the REMO project and mounted several FH-77s onto the Volvo A30D all-terrain articulated hauliers. This project led to the creation of the FH-77BW L52 Archer, which is a 52 caliber variant of the FH-77. 12 cm Rurlik Kust Artillery PS M80 Karin, also known as the CD80, was the coastal artillery variant of the FH-77 with a 120 mm 55 caliber barrel. The Karin was an acronym for the Kust Artillery S Rurliga Invaschutz Feuerschwar meaning Coastal Artillery's Mobile Invasion Defense. In addition to the barrel, it also had a different ammunition handling system and a fully remote-controlled improved laying system. Thanks to these features, the Karen could engage moving naval targets with high precision. 
The Royal Swedish Coast Artillery took the delivery of the pre-production model of the Karen in 1978 for trials. Three years later, the revised serial production variant, which could be operated with fire control radar, was delivered. It had a rate of fire of 15 rounds per minute and a range of 30,000 meters. The Karen was also installed on the Volvo A30D all-terrain articulated haulier for trial purposes. But unlike the Archer program, this project was terminated later. We should add that the Indian Danish Toad Howitzer is developed based on the FH 77. Sweden retired all FH 77s and Karens by the new millennium. India and Nigeria still operate this Howitzer. The crew of the FH 77B is 6 people. In the traveling position, the Howitzer is 11.6 meters long, 2.65 meters wide, and 2.82 meters high. In the firing position, its width increases to 7.18 meters. The combat weight of the FH-77B is 12,000 kilograms. The 155 mm 39 caliber gun has a range of 34,000 meters with a standard projectile and 30,000 meters with a high explosive extended range projectile. The rate of fire is 10 rounds per minute. The elevation of the gun is between minus 3 and plus 70 degrees. The barrel can be traversed at 30 degrees on both sides. Due to the neutrality policy of Sweden, the FH-77 never saw combat in the Swedish army service. However, the Nigerian howitzers continued to fight against the jihadist groups in the country successfully. But we should admit that the adventures of the FH-77 in India have made it mediatic. India's initial order for 410 FH-77Bs in the mid-1980s was the largest export success in Swedish history. Also, Dalhi planned to produce another 1,000 howitzers under license. But these happy days ended with a story aired by a Swedish radio in 1987. The infamous Bofors scandal broke out, which revealed that some Indian politicians had been involved in bribery during the negotiations. Then Dalhi naturally cancelled the program. Even though India had chosen the FH-77 called Balfour's gun in this country because of the bribery, the howitzer proved its value during the 1999 Kargil War. In the early stages of the war, the Pakistan army captured key positions on hilltops overlooking routes connecting Siachen and Kashmir Valley with the rest of the country. The Indians could not get proper air support to repel the Pakistanis. In Star Wars, when Anakin said don't underestimate my power to Obi-Wan, who was on the high ground, he was wrong. But this time, the Indians said don't underestimate the power of our Bofors guns, and they were right. During Operation Vijay, the Bofors guns of the Indian army managed to force the Pakistan army to vacate the hilltops by suppressing the enemy's artillery. Its highly accurate deep strike and direct fire capabilities had paralyzed the Pakistanis. But the battle was also highly costly. The 286th medium regiment of the Indian army lost all 18 Bofors guns in 25 days. But the bravely fought Indians managed to take the strategic peaks like Tiger Hill and Tololan with the invaluable assistance of the FH-77. The Bofors gun was the real hero of the Kargil War. It is unfair to remember the FH-77 Bofors scandal. It is indeed a successful howitzer which bears the elegance and high quality of Swedish engineering. Still, we should admit that the FH-77 has managed to erase the black mark next to its name with its achievements in the Kargil War. It undoubtedly deserves to be mentioned as a legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.